might have some other people come in and, and sign in as, as they as they wish, but we'll go ahead and get started for tonight's um, public hearing, public meeting. I'm going to take my mask off while I talk. Uh, my name is Karen Wilson. I'm with the Public Service Commission uh, staff at the public. I'm staff with the Public Service Commission and staff at the PSC provides staff support to the um, Kentucky Electric Generation and Transmission Siding Board. So the purpose of this meeting is to take public comments in the application from Mount Olive Creek Solar. The case number, and I apologize, I don't have it on the slide, but the case number is 2020-00226. So I'm just going to give a very brief overview of the siding board, and then I'm going to turn it over to Jennifer Fell, who is um, one of our staff attorneys, and she's going to provide a little bit of an overview of what was um, contained in the Mount Olive Creek application. And then we'll turn it over to the siding board itself. Um, Chairman Chandler is going to be presiding, and he'll give some instructions on, on how we're going to conduct the public it, uh, we regulate about 1,100 utilities. Um, the bulk of those 1,100 are small water companies, small water utilities. The PSC does not regulate municipal, municipal utilities except for gas pipeline safety. And we do not regulate municipal or co ops served by TVA. Um, so the signing board was created by statute in 2002 and the statute attached the siding board to the Public Service Commission and we use the term for administrative purposes. So the siding board is um, the three um, Public Service Commission commissioners serve on the siding board um, and the next slide shows a little bit more about the actual makeup of the siding board. Um, applicants pay a fee when they submit an application for, whether it's a solar or uh, this, you know, the siding board doesn't just look at um, solar projects, that just, it happens to be what we have right now, our, our solar projects. Um, and um, the purpose of the siding board to review applications and then grant certificates if approved for the construction of electric generating facilities um, for facilities greater than 10 megawatts. They also look at transmission lines proposed by non-regulated uh, utilities. Um, so with the siding board, the power produced by these facilities is it's by merchant generators, not regulated by the, by the PSC itself, and they sell power into wholesale markets. So the siding board is a seven member board, as I mentioned, um, the, the three commissioners at the PSC serve on the siding board. Also the secretary of the energy and environment cabinet or a designee, the secretary of the cabinet for economic development or a designee. And then each application or each um, siding board proposal is distinct in that then you have two local members of the community where the site is proposed to be built. So those two ad hoc members are appointed by the governor in specific cases. Um, and generally you would have like, for example, in this case, the county judge executive and then a resident of the county. So if uh, each, like I said, each project would have a different makeup with those two ad hoc members. So. Um, and then the signing board review criteria, things such as noise and visual impacts, economic impacts, potential impact on the trans transmission system, compliance with um, setback requirements if there is no planning and zoning. Planning and zoning takes precedence over the actual statutes for setbacks if, if there is planning and zoning. And then review of items included in the site assessment report and when Jennifer Fell goes over the application, she'll go a little bit more into de detail about the, um, what's included in the site assessment report. Um, I mentioned that the siding board was created by statute in 2002. For the first decade of its existence, there were, um, 
for maybe 15 projects filed with the siting board, and then we had fixed four notices of intent, and they're all for solar facilities. Um, and the map is showing where we have either um, a final order issued or an application or a notice of intent. And I'm gonna now turn it over to Jennifer and she's gonna go over the little bit of the details of the application. And if everyone can actually hear me okay, I may remain seated so I keep my voice going this direction. I'm horrible about turning back and forth. Ms. Wilson did an excellent job of that. Um, as she stated, I'm just going to give a very brief and broad overview of the application. It was filed in July of 2020, and their complete application was filed May 7th of 2021. Um, as Ms. Wilson referenced, the case number is 2020-00226. And in their application, Mount Olive Creek has proposed a 60, or approximately 60 megawatt solar facility. Um, the proposed site of the project is, a, forgive me if I mispronounce this, um, Sano Road. And the power from the um, facility that's proposed to be constructed will be sold into the wholesale market through an existing transmission line that crosses the property. Um, this existing transmission line is owned by East Kentucky Power Cooperative. Um, before the application was ever filed, or 8th of 2020, um, they have also throughout the process delivered public notice to the adjacent landowners um, to the proposed property, um, project property, on April 23rd of 2021. Public notice was also published in the local newspaper, the Times Journal, on April 8th, 2021. And there has also been a presentation to the fiscal court more recently in April of 2021. Uh, Mount Olive Creek has requested an industrial revenue bond or an IRB and a pilot agreement, which is payment in lieu of taxes, which both have been approved. Um, the application itself, just a few more details about it states that there's no public or private parks or healthcare facilities within two miles of the project's radius. There is one school, uh, which is Russell Springs Elementary, 7,500 feet away from the uh, border of the project. Six, there are six residential neighborhoods within 2,000 feet of the project. And that is the reason that Mount Olive has filed a motion for deviation from that statutorily required setback of 2,000 feet. And I'll go into a little more detail about that in just a minute. Um, this 475 acre site has historically been used for pasture and cropland purposes. The uh, solar panels that are being proposed as part of this site um, are single axis tracking racks. It's just the best explanation I can give it. They rotate um, slowly to track the sun's path. I believe it's from east to west throughout the day one time. Um, part of the proposal is vegetative buffers along the border of the project, um, particularly along sections of the road surrounding the project that don't already have existing vegetation to block the view of the project. And the proposed vegetation would consist of um, two staggered rows of evergreen trees that upon maturity would be at a height of 15 feet. Um, the site will not be accessible by the public. It will be contained uh, with inside of a security fence. And part of the proposal is that native pollinator species will be planted at the site uh, which are essential for certain agricultural crops, such as soybeans. Um, as far as the motion for deviation that I briefly mentioned, um, pursuant to this statute, KRS 278.706, it establishes setback requirements of 2,000 feet from the nearest residential neighborhood, school, hospital, or nursing home. Um, in their motion for deviation, Mount Olive Creek notes that there are six residential neighborhoods within 2,000 feet of the project, and they are requesting a setback of 150 feet 
from those six neighborhoods um, in regards to the noise generating equipment. Uh, those will also be, there. sorry, the um, step back you're requesting for that equipment is 300 feet, at least 300 feet. As far as impact on the generation system in Kentucky, uh, the power produced by this project would be transmitted via the existing line for East Kentucky Power Company, uh, their infrastructure to PJM. If you don't know what PJM, it's a transitional, or sorry, regional transmission organization that coordinates the movement of wholesale electricity um, in 13 states and the District of Columbia. And this project also includes an option for energy storage HVAC systems um, that may be utilized on the project site. The proposed economic impact from the proposed solar project um, Mount Olive Creek and the, the local fiscal court, as I've mentioned, have entered into a pilot agreement uh, that was reached on April 12, 2021. And this will require payments of $1,000 per megawatt of capacity, basically the energy being produced um, for the first 20 years of the project's operation. And then it would go to $350 per megawatt for the um, remaining 20 years of the project. The total amount of these payments over the, the expected duration or life of the project of 40 years um, is this figure of around 1.6 million. And Mount Olive Creek believes the period of construction would result um, initially in an estimated 199 temporary construction jobs and that construction of the project site is estimated to take approximately one year. Um, and as Ms. Wilson mentioned, um, a large part of what the siting board requires of these proposed projects and uh, reviews in order to make sure the projects meet all statutory and regulatory requirements is called a site assessment report. And Mount Olive Creek has filed theirs along with their application. Um, the site assessment report when being reviewed, there, there's these factors that we look at in depth. Uh, first is compatibility with scenic surroundings. So the siting board is taking into account um, things such as the vegetative buffering we talked about, existing natural vegetative buffering that's already there um, to buffer the view of the project from the surrounding properties and residences. Um, we also look at property value impacts, any potential changes um, to those property values as a result of the project. Anticipated noise levels at the property boundary and adjoining properties. Um, Siding board is looking at the peak and average noise levels, both during the construction phase as well as the operational phase. Effect on roads, railways, and fugitive dust, um, looking at any impact on traffic or any degradation to the, the roadways that might occur in the vicinity, and also mitigation measures to limit the negative effects uh, of any of these other um, issues that we've reviewed, um, which are basically recommendations and ultimately requirements from the siting board um, as conditions to granting of a certificate for the proposed project. And just, just to make sure the public is aware, this um, site assessment report I've been talking about, as well as all documents that have been filed, are, are available on the PSC website, the Public Service Commission website. With that being said, that is our, our overview of the application from Mount Olive Creek. And I will now turn it over to uh, the chairman. All right, we'll get started. Good evening. My name is Kent Chandler. I'm the chairman of the Kentucky Public Service Commission and the Kentucky State Board on Electric Generation and Transmission Siting. This meeting is being recorded for the benefit of the public, the record, and in order for the other siting board members to review and consider. I'm joined today by PSC Vice Chair Amy Cubbage, Judge Robertson, and Mr. Jeff Huber. I'm also joined by PSC staff Karen Wilson, Jennifer Fell, Jim Rhodes, Anthony Harrod, and Candace Sacre. Uh, not able to participate uh, this evening, but participating in this case 
our PSC Commissioner Marion Butler, and uh, proxy for the Secretary of Cabinet for Economic Development, Charlie Rowland, and proxy for uh, the Secretary of the Energy and Environment Cabinet, Energy and Environment Cabinet, uh, Deputy Secretary John Lyons. We are here today to take public comments in the application of Mount Olive Creek Solar LLC to construct an approximately 60 megawatt alternating current photovoltaic electric generating facility in Russell County, Kentucky. To reiterate the point made during the interview, or overview, excuse me, the role and obligation of the Siding Board is to review applications and grant certificates if approved for the construction of electric generating facilities greater than 10 megawatts and for transmission lines proposed by entities not regulated by the Kentucky Public Service Commission. We understand in any case proceeding proposing the construction of such a project that there may be strong feelings and opinions. We ask that you provide comments today that are respectful and are also mindful of the time limit of each speaker. We are here to listen. The applicant is not presenting during the public meeting. The applicant has their opportunity to make their case during the pendency of this case. This is an opportunity, though, for members of the community in which the solar project is proposed to be built to state their positions, concerns, and provide the siting board comments for its consideration. Again, the siting board is here to listen. During today's comment session, we will not be answering questions. The siting board is the fact finder and decision maker in this case, and as such, the board members are unable to comment or speak to the process or substance of the pending application. Nevertheless, questions you raise during your comments may well be of assistance to the siting board and its staff in adjudicating this matter. If you have questions for the applicant, you may ask them during this public meeting with the anticipation that they can later convey an appropriate answer outside of this public meeting. Contact information for the applicant can be received by calling the siting board at the, web, at the number listed on the website. Uh, at this time, in, in case folks do have questions for the applicant, uh, could I have uh, any individuals that are here on behalf of the applicant please stand? Okay. So if you have questions for them, Mr. Van Meter, Mr. Dutton, I'm sure we'll be happy to speak with you after the event. Um, due to the number of comments we expect tonight, we'll be limiting the length of comments to eight minutes. We will let you know when you have one minute remaining. As always, written comments may be made to the siting board at any time during consideration of a case and must include your name, address, and state the case number. In this matter, as uh, Ms. Wilson mentioned, the case number is case number 2020-00226. That's 2020-00226. When you speak, please provide your name and address prior to your questions or uh, prior to your comments. We will now begin taking comments. Um, we have, uh, I think, two folks that have signed up to provide comments, and we're going to call them in the order in which they've uh, signed up. After these two individuals have spoken, uh, if anybody else would like to provide additional comments, uh, just please stand and uh, I'll, I'll point you out and ask you to provide your name uh, and address. The first person that uh, signed up to provide comments or requested to provide comments is Glenn Shepard. Is Glenn Shepard here? Good evening. Uh, just please remember to state your name and address, uh, and uh, you'll have eight minutes. Okay, my name is Glenn Shepard. I'm, my address is 224 Miller Short Road, Russell Springs, Kentucky. And I'm here to, my concerns on the devaluation of my property. I'm uh, and now in contact with uh, Mr. Van Meter, which works for the power company. And uh, we're talking about my concerns. so. I'll keep it short and I'll allow somebody else to speak and I'll talk to Mr. Van Meter about my concerns to, uh, about my property and the evaluation of it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shepard. And as always, if you do decide to file public comments, uh, just you can do so either through mail or online at public service. Okay, thank you. All right, the next person we have signed up uh, is Cameron Tiller. Cameron Tiller here. Good evening. Care if I take this off? 
Uh, is this on or no? No. Okay, I didn't know if I needed to lean forward or pull it towards me or what. Uh, my name is Cameron Tiller. I reside at 215 Shaw Tiller Road, Russell Springs, Kentucky. Um, I know I've spoke with Mr. Van Meter myself uh, about my concerns. Um, and I, I know I've, I've obviously wrote you guys uh, also, you know, requesting uh, to allow me to have my uh, public comment. Um, one of my concerns that I've had, and, and it really doesn't make sense for this county to allow a solar project like this because I feel like it's going to affect property values. Um, now, I know that there's been studies done by the solar company that say that uh, property values won't be affected, uh, but I feel like looking at it, uh, for, for the way it is, it just seems to me that property values will be impacted by this project. Um, it, it, you know, if you take five acres and a home and say it's surrounded on three sides by woods and you take the, si the same five acres and a home surrounded by a chain link fence and solar panels, well obviously you would prefer to buy the one on three sides surrounded by trees instead of the one with solar panels. The only way you would buy the one surrounded by solar panels as if it was significantly cheaper. Um, this county has uh, a large economy built on tourism and uh, real estate around tourism. Uh, we have a economy that is uh, really boosted by agriculture and I feel like this is gonna hurt our uh, agriculture and our local economy as far as it goes with farmers, uh, feed stores, fertilized companies. Uh, I have concerns around tourism uh, and how this will impact uh, people who possibly move down here to live in, in, in this area. Um, another one of my concerns is the visual impacts of this. I know that there is going to be uh, trees planted to buffer uh, the zone to where it's not seen, but you got to think trees, uh, if they're going to get 15 foot high, it's going to take several years for that to happen. So obviously this is going to create some visual impacts. I know I've spoken with Mr. Van Meter uh, several times. Uh, one thing that uh, is uncertain is where is this energy going and how is this benefiting our county? Uh, you look at the industrial revenue bonds on this project. Uh, I know you guys mentioned it's gonna be 1.6 million over 40 years. Uh, but if you do the math and take the tax rate of the county alone uh, and run the numbers on that, uh, it comes out to a fraction of 1% of what the county's budget is. Uh, so it's, you know, the pilot payments aren't as significant as uh, one might believe. Um, so that's my concern is, I, you know, I don't, I don't want a project to come into the county that could possibly, uh, you know, I want it to be able to be economically benefit in the county as a whole. Um, another concern I have is construction times. I know that they've filed in the application that they want to construct this seven days, you know, they want to work seven days a week. I think that for people living around there, there's a lot of churches in the area. There's a lot of homes out there. Uh, I know I've spoke to Mr. Van Meter myself about this. Uh, I live uh, approximately six miles from town, but when the county fair is going on, I can hear the demo derby from my backyard. So sound really travels out in my area. And if this is going on seven days a week, uh, especially on Saturdays and Sundays when I'm off. Uh, the, the noise associated with pile driving, I'll give you an example. There was a guy, uh, two farms over from me, putting a fence up the other day with a skid steer, and he was just pounding in wooden posts, and I could hear it uh, fairly loud from my house, enough that I could hear it inside my house. So I'm just trying to imagine what it would be like if you were pile driving, uh, you know, hundreds and thousands of steel posts. Uh, seven days a week. I feel like that that could be an issue. So um, if you guys do go forward and grant this, uh, I just hope that, you know, as far as the construction goes, it happens uh, not on the weekends. Um, another one of my concerns that I have is, uh, as far as this goes, is historical sites. I know at my farm, which is located a half a mile, actually closer than that from this project, uh, in the past, I've found a lot of prehistoric findings on my property. 
I haven't seen anything in the documentation that shows that they have uh, looked for possible prehistoric burial grounds. I know that that's something that has, you know, I have found uh, prehistoric artifacts on my property and I just don't want them to be disturbed if this solar project comes in the area. Um, and other than that, that's all I got, guys. Thank you. All right, so now that Mr. Tiller and Mr. Shepard have, have spoken, is there anybody else that would like to provide any public comment at this time? Here, none. Um, I'll just remind folks, if I can find my piece of paper, um, that comments can be made any time on this case. Uh, we just ask that when you provide written comments, uh, that you provide your name, address, and that you state the case number, 2020-00226. Uh, just as an aside, for anybody that may be watching this streaming live or here in the room, to make it a little easier on you, um, the ability to file comments is, is it's pretty easy once you get to the Kentucky Public Service Commission website. That website, for anyone's benefit, is psc.ky.gov, um, and you'll be able to search by case number and find the entire docket on this, uh, the case number 2020-00226. That is psc.ky.gov. Um, so without any uh, further public comment, thank you all for coming tonight. I appreciate you showing up on a rainy evening. Um, if you have any questions, uh, I'm sure that Mr. Dutton and Mr. Van Meter will be happy to answer them on behalf of the applicant. And if you have any questions for PSC staff, uh, again, you can find the Kentucky Public Service Commission uh, phone number on our website, psc.ky.gov. I think there's a hearing set in this matter, uh, an evidentiary hearing, you know, in two weeks. Yeah, uh, two weeks from yesterday, two weeks from yesterday on the 28th. Uh, that hearing will be streamed live uh, on the Public Service Commission's YouTube site, and a link to that can be found at the Kentucky Public Service Commission website at psc.ky.gov. Um, thank you all, and please have a safe evening.